All right guys, what is going on? So today we have a really cool video for you guys because my truck, my F100 is finally getting an upgrade. It probably should have gotten in the neighborhood of three or four years ago. We're finally putting disc brakes on this truck. So we got a lot to go through. Let's go in the garage and go over it. All right, so recently in the last videos, right around the time we put the slicks on the F100, you guys might remember when I actually put the thing up on jack stands and wiggled the wheel back and forth and we saw how absolutely destroyed my kingpins were. Well, that hasn't gotten any better. So we're actually gonna be taking the beams apart and actually changing those kingpins out. And I would feel super inefficient taking the kingpins out and redoing the stuff in the spindles to put drum brakes spindles back on my truck. Uh, so I actually put a post out on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, go follow me right here. Uh, and I put a post out asking you guys if any of you guys had a disc brake set of uh, basically spindles in the whole you know, assembly for an F100. Well, my good friend Alex actually reached out to me. Big shout out to him. He just, I believe, did a Crown Vic swap on a 74. If you guys do not know, 73 to 79 F100s actually came factory with disc brakes. Um, and it's a 7 8 kingpin, and it's exactly the same as what came on the bump sides in terms of beams. So we should be able to just simply swap everything over, uh, use the same size kingpin, but the spindle, we're just going from a drone to a disc brake spindle. That's basically what we got going over here on the workbench are these two disc brake assemblies off of Alex's truck. These are his old setup. So we're pretty much going to go through these entire things you know back to front uh, but I need to get these spindles sent out to a machine shop to get them actually uh, machined for the new kingpins because you can't just press those in we learned those with Sean's truck you actually need to get the tolerance set and uh, actually ream them out uh, to the correct size so I'm gonna go ahead and take these things all the way apart and just grab just the spindles clean those up get those ready to go to the machine shop tomorrow when we get our kingpins in I'll resurface these rotors and we'll pretty much rebuild these whole things so let's get right into it All right, so I got uh, pretty much everything taken apart. I got the bearings out, all the grease, old grease out. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and send these out to get resurfaced at a local O'Reilly's. Uh, they're not bad at all, actually. They're in pretty good shape, um, but they're already off. So I might as well just go ahead and have them resurfaced. Not too big a deal. So I'm gonna go get these resurfaced, get all the blue paint off of them. While they're getting resurfaced, I will be getting all of the paint and junk off of the calipers, um, getting the pads and everything, and kind of just rebuilding everything. So when I get them back, this will go on as smooth as possible. All right, well, got our two spindles down here. We're down in a machine shop, a local machine shop. We're gonna drop these two guys off to get machined uh, for our new kingpin. So they're gonna press the old stuff out, press the new stuff in. You have to do that when you're changing your kingpins. They do not just slide in. So these inner sleeves need to be pressed out uh, and new ones need to be put in. So we're gonna get all that stuff done and come back when they're all done. All right, guys, we're gonna walk through a little mail time segment real quick. Uh, I got a couple packages from you guys. Thank you a lot for the guys that did send me stuff. I really do appreciate it as always. Uh, I'm gonna run through this stuff and see what we got. So our first one's from Devin the Motorcycle Mechanic uh, on YouTube. You guys can go ahead and check him out. I'll leave his uh, YouTube channel down in the comments. He sent me a lot of packages before and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Dang, that's actually really sick. I didn't even know they made these. That's a full step bit kit. Basically from uh, 3 16th half inch, eighth inch half inch. I did not know they made them in kits like that. That's awesome. I, well, this will go to great use. I was actually having to drill drill out my lease stream purchase and I needed a drill step bit that was better than the ones I had. So thank you, I appreciate it. Those go to good use. I got two more from Devin the Motorcycle Mechanic. I know this is gonna be good. I don't even know what it says yet. Oh, no way! That's so sick. If you're not first, you're last. Look at that. I'm gonna wear the hell out of this. That is such a cool shirt. I am a large, just in case you guys are wondering, so thank you, that's perfect. If you're not first, you're last, Ricky Bobby. That's like my favorite shirt ever, holy crap. That's the coolest thing I've ever gotten. All right, now it looks like we got some electronic pieces. Oh, I see what these are. Um, so it looks like these are little clips that kind of go on the floor or if I guess in a car, I would be running under the carpet or some sort of piece and I can run wires through them and they don't uh, get the wires smashed. They won't get all smashed up. 
That's pretty sick, actually. I like these. All right, next one's from Matt DeGenero. Hopefully, I didn't butcher that. Pretty bad with names. What's up, Craig? Big fan of the channel. My name is Matt. I'm 25. I'm from, from Connecticut, the Rust Belt. The car scene out west must be cool because out here on the east coast, no one does old Fords, or at least in our age range. I grew up around old Fords. My father has three 68 Galaxies. My brother has a 68, 67 Mustang, and, and my fiance and I have Fox Body Mustangs. I've always been a fan of the old F100s, and I dig yours. When winter is over, my fiance wants to sell her Fox Body and look for a 68 F100 and build that. My never-ending project is an 87 Fox Body T-Top 302 with GT40 P heads, TFS Stage One cam, TFS intake, nothing crazy. Just put a micro squirt in it and have a twin, have a turbo setup waiting for it on the shelf. I've been making YouTube, I've been making some YouTube videos for it over the past year or two at One Stop Pony Shop on YouTube, and then haven't in a while as I started a Fox Body Club of Connecticut last year and I've been putting a lot of time towards it. Looks like down here on the bottom, he's been talking about, he recently got engaged and has a wedding coming up. He went to school for engineering and he runs a little 3D printing company. He does do a lot of old emblems and uh, replacements made out of 3D printing instead of like the actual like metal pieces that you would find. And a lot of the proceeds are going to his wedding that's coming up and basically everything after the wedding can go into his project cars. Um, I think his next project car is a 70 or 71 Maverick Grabber, which looks pretty cool. And he sent me some emblems to go through. So let's go through it and see what we got. Those are really cool. That's 3D printed. That's actually super sick. Oh my gosh. So you can see I got the larger Motorsports logo as well as the smaller one. Uh, these things are actually really cool. I didn't really, I don't know much about 3D printing, but I didn't know you can actually, I mean, guess you can make anything you want. And this, this is actually pretty sick. So thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. There's also a little five liter keychain. So that's pretty cool. If you guys aren't interested in any sort of 3D printing, uh, go ahead and check him out. I'll leave his Facebook page and all of his social media down in the description so you guys can check it out if you want to get something made for yourself. So anyways, thank you guys a ton for sending me all the packages. I really do appreciate it. As always, if you do want to send me something, I'll put it up on the screen here as well as down in the description as always. Now let's get right back into the video. All right, you guys, going to start off today's video with a little sneak peek, but not a big one. Dang, look at all that. New goodies on there. Ooh, is that a disc brake on a 71? Nice. Freshly painted stuff. So that looks pretty good. All right guys, what's going on? So today's video is a cool one because hopefully in this video, if all goes well, we'll actually have this thing back on its own weight for the first time in a while, which means overall we can finally work on the engine and hopefully get it running again. Um, it does run, it just has a little bit of a valve train rattle because uh, the rocker stud is loose. But other than that, the purpose of this video is to get this thing back on the ground and go over the disc brake conversion that I'm doing and a lot of the other suspension things. So as you can see, I've got a slick mocked up on it because what better way to put a wheel back on this thing for the first time and then to hang one of my slicks. So that's hanging on there and dang, does it look good. I always forgot how aggressive this setup is and you guys can just see, I mean, if nothing else, you guys can see on this side how important wheels and tires are to a build. This is the one off my Galaxy, which is very similar to a stock 15 by, you know, seven inch wheel that would have came on these trucks. And this is a 15 by 10 and you guys can overall totally tell the difference. Just, I mean, they're not much different in height, but <laughs> yeah, kind of get a look at that, but man, that looks freaking awesome. But this is just a dry mock-up. I just wanted to make sure everything fits and I got to pull it back off, grease everything, and actually put it together for the last time, hopefully. Uh, start running brake lines and steering and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna go to the store, get a seal puller real quick. We're gonna start slapping this thing together. So hopefully this works, I'm not really sure, but I needed to pull this rear seal, uh, the old seal out of the rear end and replace it. So I got a bearing puller because I didn't have an actual like seal puller for this. So hopefully I can slide it in, twist it, and then pop it out. I figure if I can pull a bearing, I should be able to pull a seal. So we'll see. Wow, it does work, look at that. Probably gonna get yelled at for this, but this remover, since it has a flat washer, I can also use it as an installer. Um, 
by simply just placing the flat edge of the washer inside the, the chamfer of the seal and then just like slowly tapping it in. Cool. Seal installed. Look at that. Easy peasy. All right, guys, so let me explain kind of what's going on right here. So if you guys are confused, what I have going on here, I've already actually shimmed this thing and put it on. This is a 73 F100 disc brake, factory disc brake spindle on my factory 71 beam. Now, uh, you can do this. This is a common swap. This is a stock swap. It's kind of your cheap budget uh, disc brake swap. I wouldn't actually recommend going out and buying a $1,000 kit. You can do it for half that, less than half that if you try hard enough. But there's a very big important difference between a 73 and 4 disc brake spindle and a 75 to 79 spindle. And the difference is whether it's a 7 8 kingpin or a 1 inch kingpin, uh, the height of the actual beam and the height of the kingpin is totally different on a 75 to 79 and 73 to or 74. So the earlier 73 and 4 matches the kingpin dimensions from the 67 to 72 trucks. So if you're going to do a disc brake conversion and you're not going to take the beam with it which is common if you were very stubborn like me and want to keep your stock beams for whatever dumb reason and you don't want to pull the beams i had these ships so it was a lot easier to just ship a spindle than the whole front end i opted to do it this way you have to run a 73 and 4 spindle on the older beams i would recommend just taking the beams out of the whole truck if you want to run a 73 and 4 spindle and you can find the beams with it just get the beams with it it's easier you know it all works together anyways likewise with 75 to 79 but i didn't um but i did have to machine these out so i got a new kingpin kit uh this is that part number right there so that's the kingpin kit that i used that is a 7 8 kingpin i had the spindles taken down to a machine shop with the beams and i had them both reamed out to the proper size to match you have to do that <laughs> don't you're gonna destroy the whole kingpin kit if you don't um so i had to have those so they're perfectly machined so your kingpin just slides straight through so there's no wobbling here and there's no bolts holding a kingpin in. There's just the slide pin on the side, but you can see it's not, it's like it's tight. It's not gonna move. So I did all that already. I'm gonna do it on the other side of once I get the, the extra shims to show you. But we're gonna go ahead and throw this side together real quick. I'm gonna kind of time lapse it and just slap it together and kind of show you what we got going on when it's done. So one of the things we're going to be doing, you can see I got all this in. Uh, I had to tap in this little clip retainer guy right here. I uh, slip the pads over and have the any press the any rattle spring or whatever it is for the pads. Um, but I've got all that installed. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and seat the bearing. So it's an inch and a sixteenth. Go ahead and torque it down. It's somewhere between I think 20 and 25 foot pounds. So I've got it at 22. So we're good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll back that off because um, this bearing will break in over time and if you just leave it hand tight put a cotter pin in it the bearing will kind of break in and see itself a little bit and then it'll become loose and then it will destroy the bearing over time a lot faster so kind of just give it a good snug by hand and nothing maybe just the weight of the torque wrench arm there you go, right there. You can see that's nice, it's very nice. So the one thing that I used to always do and mess up was installing these caps um, because I used to try to hit them around the face and I never thought uh, they would be a good idea to use the edge. So instead of damaging this thing, that's the little lip around the edge is for. You can kind of go around it, and tap it into place. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and put in is the rear end. I have this fancy dancy little, I think it's a Felpro. Actually, it might not be Felpro, I don't remember. It's metal lined, I got it from a drive, you know, shaft shop or drive rear end shop. Um, metal lined, so we're gonna go ahead and silicone this to the rear end, and then we will flip it and do white lithium grease on the other side, so I can reuse this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this thing in the rear end and hopefully get this third member in. This is gonna be the part that sucks.
that's ironic. They'll have really nice painted restored cars that have like a rusty undercarriage. And then you have my rusty piece of junk truck with a fully painted and polished undercarriage. All new bushings, all new everything. It's like... Mine's barely going to have an undercarriage when I'm done with it. <laughs> Just doing a little bit of reverse psychology with this thing, I guess. Okay, that was absolutely miserable getting that in. But I will admit it could have been way worse if it didn't have the jack and it didn't have Sean's help. Shout out to Sean helping me put that thing in. But it is in, so you can see it's the silicone on the axle side and the white lithium grease on the third member side. Uh, and I was told that, so I can basically reuse the gasket if I wanted to. And when I take the third member out, I'm not going to have a bunch of silicone and torn gasket stuck on and I'll have to scrape the gasket off. So that's pretty great. Um, but yeah, now I'm going to put the backing blades on, start running the brake lines, parking brake stuff, and the axles. And hopefully I can get the ass end of this thing back on the ground. And then the... Uh, and then this one side's all together. You can see that's all done. Um, I just gotta wait for my kingpin shims for the other side. And then hopefully, finally, I can get this thing back on its own way. We can have a video for you guys. That's what's taking this video so long to get out, so I apologize. thing I noticed after this whole paint your rear end thing is uh, I have to use a towel every single time I jack it up. That's great. And hope that I don't scratch it. Alright guys, it's finally on the ground. It's been a while. Dang, that just looks good. So now you can kind of see everything, how it would work. And that is a 73 disc brake spindle and disc brake on a 71 beam. And it does work. Wow, it's weird seeing disc brakes on my truck. Man, I haven't seen anything on the ground so long. It looks so tiny. Back end's on the ground, it looks good. Everything's all working well in there. Ooh, dang. Like I said, it looks more orange on camera than it actually is. It's actually more of a brown color, or a copper color. But dang, it's on the ground, look at that. Would've never thought. 
So I really do apologize for the wait for this video. It was kind of a lot more of a pain to get out than I wanted because I had unexpected machine work I had to do uh, to the beams and a couple other things to get everything to work. Uh, when you're doing a spindle swap or taking a spindle from another truck and trying to get it to go with yours, take your beams, take your spindles, and take your new kingpin kit and take them to the machine shop and have them all done. Just make sure that kingpin fits perfectly, otherwise you will run into issues, which is what I had going on here. But the nice thing about all this is now we can transition to the motor. I kind of left you guys on a little bit of a cliffhanger there. We drove it to the show and then just kind of idled it around and then I had a valve train issue and I never really did anything with it um, because the suspension took so much more time than I wanted it to. But we have a, a cylinder head issue that we're going to fix in the following videos. I'm going to kind of address the problem and kind of fix it there in one, hopefully one or two videos at max. And we should have this thing driving while we're waiting, or running while we're waiting for the drive shaft and brake lines and little things like that while they get made. But it should be just a top end swap. It should be super simple. We have a bunch of cool upgrades. Uh, things like a Baker carburetor, single plane intake, and a different set of cylinder heads. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. With that being said, thank you guys a ton for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. Being patient with me as always. Um, it's going to rain over probably the next five days or so. I'm not quite sure what to film for videos. So if you have a suggestion, feel free to let me know in the comments. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.